Well, let's, uh, let's get into our Bible. I'll, I'll try not to keep you real long. Uh, if you're really a football fan, you would hit the old record button, you know, and not have to worry about getting home too soon tonight. I know we have some football fans here, and, you know, 49ers are a California team, and I know Logan's just dying to flip that phone on and watch the game. I saw him before the service watching it, but I told him in a minute I start preaching, you go click. Turn it off. Did you do that? Good boy. Good man. All right. Well, let's all stand together. And uh, I'll read a verse. This is kind of a continuation of the message this morning on serve the Lord. I believe I established very well through the Bible, the word of God, how God wants us to serve him. And, and I used uh, Deuteronomy chapter 10. And verses, uh, so if you'll turn there with me, Deuteronomy 10 and verse number 12, and we'll read that verse again, and then we'll get into the message this morning, for this evening. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now, O Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Let's pray. Father, I pray that as we look into the word of God, that you would speak to us through your word by your Holy Spirit. I pray, Father, you'd help me to say the things that you want me to say and preach the things I need to preach and be used of you to speak to hearts through the word. And Lord, I can't change lives, but I know your word can. And I know the Spirit of God can change lives, and I pray that you would exhort and encourage those that are serving the Lord that there is a reward for doing so. And so I pray you'll bless tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. I promise tonight I'm going to be nice, okay? I'm going to try to be real nice. This morning I felt like maybe I came down a little hard. I don't know. I, I... I hope I didn't, but maybe I did in a way. But I, I, I feel like it was more of an exhortation. You know, sometimes we need that. You know what I mean? Sometimes, I, I, at least I do, I do. I, I come to get preached at when I come to church, and I want to be convicted, and I want to be exhorted, and I want to be told this is what you need to do. And I, I think we established that this morning by giving you the example that the people of Israel... We're under bondage, and God told Pharaoh to let them go so that they could, what, serve him. God wants us to serve him. And so we went through all that this morning and how God told us he, we need to serve him. But tonight I want to look at something as Job had a question. I always like to refer to Job. He's one of my heroes from the Bible. And Job said in chapter 21, verse 15, this was a question that Job had. He says, what is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? Job had a question, and I, I, I'm going to answer Job's question tonight. Now, I'm sure Job knows the answer already. But he, at, at one time when he was going through what he was going through, he had the question, what profit is there for me to serve the Lord, to pray unto him? Well, there is. Then the Bible is filled with things from the the verses in the Bible that tell us God will bless those that are faithful to serve him. And we're going to go through several things, and we're going to see the different blessings that we get by being faithful to serve the God. One of my life verses is 1 Corinthians 15, 58. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. The, 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 the verse, you know, this is Paul answering Job's question. He said, be faithful, abounding in the work of the Lord, unmovable, steadfast in that work. Abounding means just to be filled up with something. Just fill your life up with serving God. And that Paul says, if you do that, your labor is not in vain. It will count for something. 
It means something when you serve the Lord. It will count for something. Your labor is not in vain that you do for the Lord. The scripture says in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 18, For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the labor is worthy of his reward. And we spoke this morning about that word worthy. The word worthy means have some worth. The work that we do for the Lord has some value. And God says that labor, that person that works for me, is worthy of what? A reward. You know, I preached a message here several years ago, and we had a visitor here, and I preached a message about the rewards that God has for us as his servants, as his people. And for some reason, he was offended by that. He, he said, well, I don't, I don't serve the Lord for, for, for the rewards. I said, you don't? <laughs> Why not? God says there's, the labor is worthy of a reward. He said, well, I do it to, uh, because I love Jesus. I do too. But I'm looking forward to those rewards that he tells me about. Here in this life and in the life to come. There are rewards for those that serve God and serve him faithfully. So the Bible, uh, Paul told us, be faithful. Be steadfast. I was, I was blessed this Christmas. My son Brandon gave me a pocket knife with that verse engraved on it. And on the back of it, he has said, steadfast. That's what I want to be. That's my verse for my life. I want to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in God's work from the, till the end. I want to be abound. I want my life to be filled. I want that to be the most important thing in my life is serving the Lord, doing something for him, making things, doing stuff that counts for something. And so... Our labor is worthy of a reward, the Bible says. That's what God says. And I think it's okay to say, hey, I'm working for my rewards. Because we'll see as we go down through these verses that there are some rewards to be had. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 24, Knowing that the, the Lord ye shall receive a reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Jesus Christ. It says you have a, an inheritance, a reward that you will receive of the, the inheritance. And that word inheritance means it's a, something that God has appropriated for your labor. God has set aside some rewards for those who serve him. He says when you get to heaven, I have some re, uh, rewards of inheritance for you. Something that you will be able to, uh, to, to have when you get to heaven. And you will inherit these because I have appropriated them. I have assigned them for you because you serve me. Well, hopefully all of us, when we get to heaven, we'll have a room with some rewards in it. And hopefully you working at building the, those rewards up in heaven. And Malachi, if you would turn with me. And we're going to look at some of the rewards. My voice is about to give out. So <clears throat> I, I, to preach three times in one day, is uh, that's pretty tough for my voice. I'm not used to it. I'm sure if I did it more, it would be better. But look over to Malachi chapter, chapter 3, verse 17. I'm going to have to drink quite a bit of water to keep my voice going, I guess. Malachi, the last book in the New Testament, chapter or the Old Testament in chapter uh, 3, verse 17. It says, And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. In verse 18, Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. So there are the righteous who serve God. There are the wicked who do not. There's one or two of the categories. According to this verse, you either are righteous or you're wicked. You're either a servant of God or you're not. God says you're either with me or against me. And so the Bible tells us here in this verse, verse 17, as a man, and it says, in a day that when I make up my jewels, I got to thinking about that verse, jewels. A jewel is like a precious stone or 
an expression of a, some fondness. And I just picture getting to heaven someday and, and seeing those that God calls his jewels. As maybe as we, the rapture, if it happens here, that we're up, raptured up into heaven and, and uh, we're going in through the gates. I, I don't know, you know, if that's how it's going to go about, but I just kind of picture this in my mind, walking through the gates and, and somebody taps you on the shoulder and, or looks at you and says, one of the angels says, you go over there with that group. What did I, did I do something wrong? No, let's go over there. And then when everybody gets through, and there's this group over there, and God, the Lord, appears and He says, "There's my jewels. Those are the ones who served me. Those are the ones who were faithful, and served me faithfully and steadfast. Those are the ones that earned the rewards, and those are my jewels. Wouldn't you like to be in that group?" Wouldn't you like to be in that group that God says, there are some of my jewels. There are some of my precious people that served me. Now, there's going to be another group, right? There's going to be some other groups that maybe didn't serve the Lord, didn't lift the hand for God, didn't serve the Lord as we've been commanded to do. And now, yeah, they'll be there. And they'll get to enjoy heaven, but I believe there's a special place in heaven for those who serve God. I believe there's a special place who God calls, there's my precious jewels. Those are the ones that did something for me. Those are the ones who served me faithfully. And so in 2 Timothy chapter 2, if you would turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Four, six through eight. For I, this was Paul speaking towards the end of his ministry, and he said in Second Timothy chapter four, verse six, for I am now ready to be offered in the time of my departure at his hand, and I have fought a good fight, and I have finished my course, and I have kept the pace. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give, the, give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. That little group over there that God says is jewels, I can just see the ceremony going on, and he's presenting his precious jewels to the congregation. And, he's, and, then, someone said, and then he says, bring in the, the crown. Bring in the crown of righteousness. And each one of those jewels gets to put on a crown. What an what a awesome sight that I believe that's going to be. God says, here's my group who served me steadfast and faithful. And they're my jewels. And Paul said, there's a crown of righteousness that they get to put on. Boy, I wonder what that crown's going to look like, Micah. It's going to probably be awesome, don't you think? It's going to be a beautiful crown, and I want you to wear it. I want you, when we get to heaven, I want to see you walking around with your crown on. I want you to serve the Lord so that you can get that crown. I can pick on my grandson there. He's petrified right now, but that's okay. Don't you want to wear that crown? Don't you want to wear that crown? Don't you want to be one of God's precious jewels? Well, serve him then. Hold fast. The Bible says in, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 11, Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast that which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. You know, there's going to be some out there that try to take your crown. Hey, can I borrow your crown? No. No. This is my crown. I, I earned this. I worked hard for it. Well, can I just put it on? No. God says you can't. Don't let any man take your crown. And I'm not going to let any man on this earth steal me, steal away from my, uh, my duty to serve the Lord so that I can be steadfast and faithful and earn that crown. 
I'm not going to let anybody take that away from me. Because God told me, don't let them take it. Behold, I come quickly, I hold fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Revelations 2, verse 10, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Not only is there a crown of righteousness for those who are fed steadfast and faithful, but those who, who were faithful to the end. God says, I have a crown of life for you. There's more than one crown you can win, you can earn. The crown of righteousness and the crown of life, I want those crowns. And the way you, and hopefully you want those crowns also. And the way you're going to get those crowns is by serving the Lord. God says it's simple. Just serve me and serve me faithfully. And God says I have a crown for you. If you would turn with me for, to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 12. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 12. Just a few books over. We talked a lot about being worthy, having some value, having some worth. And here's that verse again, that ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and his glory. God has called you to, to be working. He has called you to, into his glory. And as you walk into his glory, you would, I would hope that God would say, there's one of my servants, there's one of my workers, there's one of my worthy, um, uh, uh, there's one of my worthy children that, that, were, that did some things that were worthy, that had some value, that were worth something. You know, uh, you hear about guys going through the midlife crisis. I didn't really go through that. I, I guess they... They have that, uh, you know, when they say, you know, you're in your 50s or whatever. They, it was a big thing they used to talk about years ago, going through the midlife crisis, you know. And I think really what it was is that you get a kind of a point in your life that you, th you think back, you think to yourself, and I know I've had these thoughts, uh, was, has my life been really worth anything? Have I really accomplished anything? Have I really, have I really serve out my purpose here in life, you know. As you get older, and I'm sure I didn't think too much about this when I was younger, but as I get older, I, I think about that. I've thought about that occasion. And hopefully I can think back, well, you know, I, you know, I have done some things for the Lord. I'm sure there's things I could have done better. There's more things that I, I could have done more of. Or, but, you know, hopefully when you think, have those thoughts that you can think, well, yes. I did do some things for God. I did, I did walk worthy. You know, I, I, like I said this morning, I got saved when I was almost 30 years old and I'd wasted my life on, on vain things, just things that were worthless and vanity. Yeah, I had a family and I tried to take good care of my family and wife and three children, but I'd really basically wasted my life and I thought, you know, that's going to change. I've wasted my life. I'm no longer going to live to the, the lust of the flesh. But I'm going to live to the glory of God. I'm going to try to live my life, the rest of my life, to the Lord Jesus Christ. I made that decision when I got saved. And I said, I'm not going to, I don't want to waste any more time. I've wasted enough of my life. And I thought, if I could just live 30 years longer for the Lord, and match those 30 years that I lived for myself and for the world and for vain things. I would be happy. But I guess I passed that. I got past that a few years ago. About eight years ago, actually. Seven or eight years ago. I can do the math. But thank God, I was, that was something that was important to me. I thought I've wasted so much time and I've wasted so much of my life. I wanted to live for God and I've tried to do that. And hopefully you have too. That you can walk worthy. You know, in 1 Corinthians, it, it's talking about, you know, this, these, this gold and silver and precious stone. Those are the works that, for God that really count for something. And also in that verse, it talks about the wood, hay, and stubble. The wood, hay, and stubble is things that we do that are, will get burned up. 
when we stand before the Lord. And the precious stones, the gold, the gold, the silver, and the precious stones are those things that will endure. And so I know that there's going to be a lot of wood, hay, and stubble in my life, but I hope that when the fire's through, that I can sift through the ashes and I can find a few nuggets of gold and maybe a few pieces of silver and a few precious stones that I earned and I did, did something for, that I did something for God. I want that for my life, and I hope that you do too. And I praise God that he has promised those things for us. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 10, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, be fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Serving the Lord is, a, is very productive. That, that was what that word fruitful means. The things that we do for God are productive. They count for something. They mean something. They accomplish something. The things that you do for God, they, they, are, being, they are being recorded. They are being... Uh, you, you have an account with those things under your name. And God says they're fruitful, they're productive. I want to live a productive life. I, I often talk to my grandchildren, especially the teenagers ones, and I'll, I'll see them sometimes and I'll ask them, I go, did you do anything productive today? I like to ask them that. You know, I like to be productive. Even now that I'm retired, I like to be, look at the end of my day and say, hey, I accomplished something, I did something. And I got something done. So I ask my grandchildren, I say, hey, what did you do today? Did you do anything productive? Well, sometimes they did, sometimes they don't. But I try to remind them of that. You know, your life is about being fruitful. Your life is about producing good works. Your life is about doing something for God. Whether it's preparing yourself for that work or Study, you know, doing their homework or their studies or their work at school work, those things prepare you for the life of being productive for Christ. Are you worthy? Are we teaching our children to be productive? So many of these, this generation we see is, they want somebody else to be productive so that they can live a good life. They want somebody else to take care of them. They want somebody else to provide everything for them. But bless God, the generation I lived in, you know, I was taught, you know, you do for your, you know, you, you take care of yourself. You work hard. You're productive. You do something. And I believe when we stand before God someday at the maybe the end life crisis, you might want to call it, at the end of our lives, can you say, I've been productive as a Christian, I've produced some good works. There's some things that I can look back in my life. You know, there's going to be some people that stand before God who are going to be ashamed because they didn't do anything for the Lord. But I know not, that's not going to be you because you're going to be able to stand and say, yeah, I, I, you know, Lord, I, I don't want to, I'm not bragging, but I think I did some things for you. I think there was some things that counted for something. I think there was some things that... Uh, made a difference maybe in somebody's life or made a difference in my church or made a difference for the ministry or something. And hopefully you can say the same. Were you productive? When you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and the wood, the wood hay and the stubble gets burned up and we're all going to have, I'm sure, some of that. But are there going to be some gold and silver and precious stones left? Be fruitful. God will bless your labor. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. Would you turn there with me, please? Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. It says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? You know, I believe those who serve God have a good conscience. Have a good conscience. They can think, you know, you know, and I, and I keep probably saying this, but you know, we can always do more. But have you done something? Can you say I've done something? Can you say, you know, because you know you can live in a conscience. You know, I, I have tried, and I have seen some 
good works and some productivity in the way of serving God. I have, I have something to show for my life. And you can have, when you serve God, you can have a good conscience. You can purge your conscience from dead works. I believe my conscience was purged when I got saved. And I said, that's enough of that foolishness. That's enough of that lie. I'm ready to serve God. And I got in with both feet. I jumped in. And I said, I want my life to count for something. If you would, turn over to Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. That was what my life was about, was serving mammon. It seemed that my goal, it seemed like back then, as we all know, you know, it was all about getting, getting things and getting, you know, making money and getting things. That's what it seemed like. But I, I found out I don't have to serve mammon anymore. That doesn't have to be my purpose in life. It's not at the end of life, whoever has the most things is the most successful. The way to be, show success is God says you don't have to serve mammon anymore. You don't have to live that life where that's all you're doing is serving mammon, serving, serving what you can get out of life personally. But you can serve God, and that brings a great reward. It says, I looked on all, you know, if you want to, if you want to see what somebody had to say about that, you ought to read the book of Ecclesiastics. Oh, Solomon wrote some verses of, that described a lot about working for mammon, and he did a lot of it. And he, he, one of his verses in Ecclesiastics 2, verse 11, he said, Then I looked on all the works of my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. You know, Solomon looked in his life, and he goes, boy, I did, you know, if you read the list, man, he did all kinds of stuff. If you read, the, especially the chapter 2, you'll read about, there's even some irrigation work in there. He did some watering systems for his trees, and he did music, and he did houses, and he did... Uh, horses, and he did all kinds of stuff, and he, and he, and and evidently he didn't do it for the Lord because he said, "I looked on all this stuff that I'd done in my life, and I thought he thought vanity, 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 all is vanity." I think he got it, but he got it late, <laughs> kind of like me. He got it late, <laughs> maybe. But hopefully he made up for it. I, you know, Solomon had some issues, and I believe part of that was that he lived for mammon. But we don't have to do that. That's a reward for us. We don't have to live that life. We can put that, yes, it is important to, to have a good job and to work hard and, and to, to provide for your family. That, that's not the motivation. The motivation is to serve God. That is our vocation, the Bible says. The vocation, our life. Our meaning in life is to serve the Lord. Look over it with me to Psalms chapter 100. Another benefit. One benefit is you don't have to serve mammon because it's vain. You don't have to live a life of vanity. You can serve God and live a life of gold, precious stones, and silver. Psalms chapter 100. I want to read that whole Psalms. It's a short, I think, five verses. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord. With gladness, come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter in his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, his truth endureth to all generations. And back there, the verse, I believe, it's number... Uh, to serve the Lord with gladness. You know, serving the Lord can bring a lot of joy and gladness in your life. If you've ever 
the, the most joy that I've ever, ever had in my life is serving the Lord. I, I don't see how people don't like it. I love serving God. I love coming to church. I love when, that, uh, the fact when I get to come to church, I get to do something for God. I get to do something that's got some value, and I get to enjoy it, and I get to be glad, and that's part of the blessings of serving God is that you can live a... A, a joyful life. You can be happy. You can enjoy. You can come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. You know, a Christian that's serving God ought to be the happiest person in the world. You ought to just enjoy your life. And the way you enjoy it is you serve God and you invest your life and you invest your family in serving the Lord. And that's the best, best life you can have. That's the most fun you can have in life. You know, most people think, well, you know, I live my life for the weekend so I can go out to the lake or I can go to the, the amusement parks. And that, those things are fine, but the true joy in life is serving God, investing your life and your family in the Lord Jesus Christ and his work. That's the best joy. Hopefully you, you're doing that. It gives you, a, when you serve the Lord, it gives you a good outlook. You know, Christians ought to have the best attitude that there is. I mean, we, we, we get to serve the Almighty God, the, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and the things that we get to do for Him will make a difference and, and will make a, an impression on Him, and, and He will reward us for all those things that we do for Him. Praise God, we get to serve Him, and we get to live for Him, and we get to work for Him, and we get to do something. That counts for something. All this other vanity and all this worldly stuff will mean nothing at the end. It will mean nothing and it's worthless. But what we do for God, God says, I will reward you. You're one of my jewels. I'll place a crown on top of your head and say, good job. Well done. Don't you want that someday? I want to see that. I don't know if I'm going to get to that point, but I, I want to say, I want to stand before God and he looks at everybody and maybe he will look you right in the eye and say, well done. Don't you want to hear that? Oh, I want to hear that. I want to live my life so that I can hear those words from my Savior, the one who he loves me and died for me, to look me in the eye and say, well done. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Man, if that doesn't get you excited about serving God, I don't know what will. You know, I'm not a real charismatic or bubbly kind of guy. I always tease my grandkids. Yeah, I got a bubbly personality. That's the farthest thing there is from the truth. I do not. But I tell you what, I have a joy in my life that no thing in the world can compare to. The joy of Serving God. You know, I had a joy of owning a business, and then it was a successful business, and I had the joy of passing it on down to my sons, and, and uh, praise God for that, but you know what? That, that, that's nice, but you know what the real joy is? Serving God. The fact that I trained them to be in church and to serve the Lord, and they're, they're, they're serving God. That's more important to me than the fact that they're running the business that I developed. So I kind of got off my, my uh, like Pastor said, I got off my notes. But, you know, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28, Wherefore we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Acceptably means with satisfaction. You know, uh, I don't know about you, but when I do something and I finish a job, to me there's a, there's a satisfaction in getting the job done. I just, I want to be able to, you know, and when I, sometimes when I drive through the, the country, uh, through this area, I can say, there's a ranch that we put in the irrigation and for that ranch, and that kind of brings some satisfaction. Or there's a, there's a system that we put in, and my son, uh, he, he designed it, and we installed it, and it was done, and it's a good system, and we gave our customer a good deal, and it's a good, he got a good, he got a bang for his buck, and 
we did a good job for him. And that brings some satisfaction. But you know what brings more satisfaction than that? Serving the Lord. That's where it's acceptable. It brings satisfaction. And you know, and another point that kind of brings to that is that when I've heard people say over the years that, and everyone that has ever said this to me, they, said, they would say, you know, I just don't feel like a part of the church. I just feel kind of like, a, like I'm just not, uh, just not a part of it. And every one of those people that ever said that to me are ones that were not serving God. They were coming to church, and like I said this morning, that's good. I'm glad they were coming to church. But I tell you, you want to feel to be, you want to really feel to be like a part of this ministry. You know what you need to do? Get in and serve God. Do something for the Lord. When you come here, you have a purpose. And when you go home and you served your purpose, you feel, you know, you feel satisfied. Hey, I did it. Hey, I, I was, I got, I got to serve the Lord today. I enjoyed that. That's satisfying to me. It, and God says, I give you that. That's from the Lord. That's a blessing from God. When you serve him and he gives you that satisfaction, kind of like when you eat a good meal and you don't, you don't eat too much. You know, I've trained, I, I trained myself to stop when I'm full. <laughs> but you eat a good meal and you know how you feel satisfied. Well, that's, that's kind of like serving the Lord. You feel satisfied. You feel like, wow. That was good. I enjoyed that. That was fun. That was great. Boy, there's no greater joy than that. That was really a good time. That's what God gives us when we serve him. He gives us satisfaction. The throne, the Bible says in Revelations 22, verse, verse 3, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb of God shall be in it, and his servants shall, sure, shall serve him. My voice is getting weak. And his servants shall serve him. We're going to get to go and be with the Lamb of God. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to serve him. So I kind of look at this life here, in this life that we live here on this earth, as kind of the training ground for that day. God says, I want you to serve me here. Then guess what? When you get to heaven, you're going to get to serve me again. You're going to get to serve me some more. And I believe that our training ground or our proving ground is here on this, this earth. And God says, I want you to serve me. I, want you, I demand it. I, I, I require that you serve me. And there's a reason for it. Because when you get to heaven, you're going to need that experience. You're going to need that experience. What kind of experience do you have? Well, I served God. I, I was an usher. I was a singer. I was a Sunday school teacher. And, and God says, that's good. That's a good resume. I got a job for you here in heaven. I want you to serve me. It's kind of like a, a training. Here's our training ground. Are you, are, you in, are you in on the training? Are you taking the classes? Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? And then Revelation chapter 7, verse 15. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on this throne shall dwell with them. As we serve him, he's going to be dwelling in our midst. It's kind of like I, when I read this verse, I thought, you know, I think the ones that are going to serve God are going to get the front row seats. I went to a Lakers basketball game one time, I took my boys with me, and paid a lot of money for these tickets. I don't know, it was like $100 a seat, and that seemed like an awful lot to me, but I guess you can spend up to like $1,000. And I thought, wow, these ought to be pretty good seats. It's 100 bucks seats, and we get there, and we're like way back up, and as you look down to the court, you could see the back side of the, back of the, well, the backboard, the, the hoop, the backboard. And I go, I'd like to be sitting down there, but you couldn't even get down there because they had guards. You couldn't even walk down there. I wanted to walk down there, see how big Shaq looked like. But he wasn't. He was there, but he wasn't playing because he's a big old guy and Shaquille O'Neal. And but you couldn't even get close. I want a front row seat when I get to heaven. 
And God says you can get that front row seat by serving me faithfully. Be in the crowd up in front. I don't want to be in the nosebleed section when I get to heaven. Now, I don't know if that's the case, but I sure, if, if there's some front row seats, I want to be sitting somewhere in the front, at least close enough where I can see the Lord up close. I don't want to have to get out my binoculars to watch the throne of God. I want to be able to... And I believe God says, I will bless those and I will be in their midst. I will dwell with them. I'll be close to them and those that serve me. And as I shared earlier, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time than in the world to come, life everlasting? That was Matthew or Luke chapter 18, verse 3. You know, we, we get blessed here. God blesses us for serving him, but there's a world to come, and it's a life everlasting. It's going to be forever. This life here on this, on this earth is just going to be as a vapor, the Bible says. It's going to be as a, just a very short time. But the things that we do now will make a difference for eternity. The way we serve God now will make a difference in eternity. It will make a difference forever in the life everlasting. So I want to encourage you to serve the Lord Jesus Christ who has called you into his kingdom and glory. And, we, and, and most of all, look forward to that day that the Lord will look you in the eye and say, well done, a good and faithful servant. Those are some of the blessings that come with serving God. I'm glad that God says, if you serve me, I will bless you. I will reward you. I have a heaven for you that is glorious. I have rewards for you that are stored up for you that you have no idea how great they are. But there's one way to get those, and that is to serve me. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Let's stand, please.